On show 470, Model Y battery shortage, Honda's future of hybrids, and Aston Martin's Rapid E debut. All those stories and many more coming up on today's podcast. Wow, show 470, we are uh, cracking through them. I guess you would do when the podcasts are daily. And uh, thank you very much for listening wherever you are in the world, whether it's a a morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Uh, The important thing is, you're listening. Uh, hello, my name is Martin, and I've been through every EV story that I can find today to save you time. Uh, just walking into the studio today, and uh, a little bit of breaking news. Maybe I'll do a full story tomorrow. This is from Christian Hetzner, who is a German auto journalist. VW Group says that management and supervisory boards have literally just approved an investment of 1 billion euros to build a battery cell production plant. VW Group says current plans for C building the EV factory cell factory. Uh, the EV battery cell factory, rather, in Salzgitter, uh, located in its home state of Lower Saxony. Statement refers to the state as a partner in the project. So Lower Saxony, the, the area in which the factory where VW is, is a partner in this cell factory. Uh, it does not say whether Lower Saxony will provide some form of state aid, though. Uh, like I say, maybe uh, I'll look into this in a full story tomorrow on the podcast, but VW once again doing big battery news. They need to if you're going to make cars in scale we've got some battery news on the podcast today actually a couple of bits uh, before we get into it as always thank you to myev.com for helping make this show uh, as well as being a great place to buy evs in the usa a great place to sell evs uh, there's a great set of articles on there as well like maybe you are looking at the cheapest way of getting in an ev that's one of the latest articles is what would your monthly payment be if you wanted to get into an ev check it out myev.com so we'll start with this battery story then tesla's main battery supplier and partner in gigafactory one the one in sparks nevada says that the star start of Model Y production next year will result in a battery shortage at the factory. Well, that is according to a story today on Electrek. Well, during Panasonic's latest earnings report, the CEO, Kazuhiro Tsuga, said that they plan to ramp up to the full capacity of Gigafactory 1. That is 35 gigawatt hours. They're going to do it this year. After that, the CEO said that Panasonic needs to talk to Tesla. He said that there's currently not enough uh, capacity to supply Tesla's expanding business, and especially the upcoming production of the Model Y. He said this, and I quote, batteries will run out. If Tesla starts to sell the Model Y and expand its business next year, what will we do then? It's one of a few topics to discuss with Tesla, including battery production in China, end quote. Looking at some of the really important comments on Electric today, uh, some of the better ones from a user called JPO234, uh, they said this, Panasonic is losing money from their Gigafactory 1 investment. They are tightening the screws to get a better deal from Tesla. I didn't know that it was losing money. I just thought they were kind of breaking even. I, I knew they hadn't turned a profit yet from their automotive battery division, despite mega, mega revenue. There's a few costs incurred there as well. Uh, so maybe they are still loss-making. I'll look into that. And one of the users called Ben on Electric simply says this, and I quote, Tesla is known for bringing manufacturing in-house. If Panasonic has not performed to Elon Musk's exacting standards, they're out on future expansion of Giga- Gigafactory 1. Tesla will do it themselves with the new tech from Maxwell, who they are buying. Uh, that will be more dense in terms of battery chemistry, boosting, boosting Gigafactory's capacity above 135 gigawatt hours a year wow okay watch this space as the model y is on its way batteries are always the source of so many stories but staying with tesla and what about if you are buying a used one as the fleet grows and as the fleet gets older yesterday we were talking about a 170,000 mile Model S, going way back to the beginning on myev.com. It's helpful to know that there are additional options in case you need to care for your out-of-warranty Tesla. It turns out that there is a, a warranty out there. The USA's first third-party warranty for Tesla owners, says this article on InsideEVs.com today. They're called X-Care, and they're meant to mirror Tesla's very own extended service agreement that it offers customers covering nearly everything the automaker's extended warranty does. Uh, While Tesla restricts its own coverage exclusively to customers who buy Teslas from Tesla Direct, uh, you can now get a third-party warranty to fill that gap. The uh, certain owners that are buying older Teslas have certainly been reluctant if they feel that they are lacking a little bit of warranty. Although, of course, the warranty that comes with a Tesla is pretty darn good in the first place. 
but I guess not if you are buying a third party one. That's super interesting. We'll um, look more into that over the next coming days and weeks. Maybe talk a little bit about warranties on our future Saturday special interview show. So Honda's CEO, yeah, he is the CEO and the president, he does both, is uh, Takehiro Hachigo. He recently spoke about two of the automakers' management challenges going forward to meet the changes. In the global automotive industry, Honda, of course, a huge maker of engines and, and cars. In terms of electrification, though, what about motors? Well, Honda is on track to reach its goal. They want to electrify, not pure electric, electrify just two-thirds of its entire sales by 2030, 11 years away. And that's only two-thirds they want to do. That's, some would say, not ambitious enough, but I'm sure it's a lot of cars they'll be doing. Uh, they said this, and I quote, At Honda, in light of the required infrastructure and how people use automobiles, we believe that hybrid technology is, at the moment, the most effective way for us to comply with regulation standards. Therefore, we will electrify our products mainly with hybrid hybrid technologies. By increasing sales of hybrid models all around the world, Honda will contribute to the global environment through the improvement of fuel economy. End quote. And it's something that we hear a lot from Toyota as well, saying, well, look, we sell hybrids, they have better fuel economy, therefore they're good for the environment. And of course, you've heard this argument many times before. If you have to put fossils inside it to make it go forwards and backwards, it's simply not a proper EV. Hybrids are great in this interim period. Maybe you have a plug-in hybrid, uh, maybe you have a hybrid and you're looking to get a full electric car. H plug-in hybrids are are great because you can do your commute maybe 10, 15, 20 miles. The next generation are going to be 40, 50 or 60 miles, by the way, on pure electric power. And you've got the engine there as a backup, maybe for long journeys or as a, an emergency. But hybrids, simply soft hybrids, any kind of hybrid, if it hasn't got a plug, it simply will not move unless you burn fossils. And we know that mine and burn, mine and burn, is not the future of this planet. So that's Honda's plan, and we'll see where it all shakes out. Moving on to Aston Martin. Aston Martin chose the Formula E Monaco e Prix. No spoilers, I'm not mentioning anything, who won? Uh, as, in case you're catching up, as the setting to provide its first all-electric model its dynamic debut, says carkeys.co.uk website. It was driven by the Aston Martin Works driver, Darren Turner, and the Aston Martin Rapid E took part in two on-track sessions throughout the day. It's got twin rear-mounted electric motors, 604 brake horsepower. Yeah, I know. Uh, which makes the electric Aston Martin the quickest version of the Rapide ever made, and even more so than the 6-litre V12. Well, only 155 of the Rapide E's are going to be built. As the luxury saloon's production run draws to a close, Aston Martin begins to develop its Lagonda brand. The Lagonda brand is going to be what they their subsidiary for all electric cars. Well, production of the model will start later in the year at Aston Martin's new production facility in St. Athen, which is in Wales. Here's an argument that we see going around in circles a few times as well. Hydrogen versus battery electric cars. Which is better is the title of this article that I found today. Electric cars appear to have the edge in today's environment. A number of car manufacturers, though, are committed to hydrogen, meaning the technology may one day find its place in the motoring world, says the green car technology news site Kling Technica, claiming that hydrogen fuel cell cars are several years behind battery cars in terms of innovation, which is why they're so expensive to own and run, says theweek.co.uk. Well, given enough time and money, hydrogen vehicles may become the more accessible option, is their conclusion. Maybe, though, for our kids... Or even our kids' kids is their take on the whole matter, having looked at this from, I think, The Week is, uh, it's not a green publication, it's a wrap-up of The Week's news, and so they're absorbing it and trying to draw some conclusions for their readers who are a general news interest group. And, well, they say, uh, nothing wrong with hydrogen, it's just a really long way away. Moving on to Audi, and if I was... If I was Audi, if I was VW, and I'm not, so I can comment and I can leave my opinion, <laughs> there's no comeback, I'd be doing everything that I can for good PR. And especially when you're up against someone like Tesla, who say that you can buy the car, drive it for a thousand miles for seven days, don't like it, take it back, get a full refund, no questions asked, as the delivery rollout of the Audi e-tron is now beginning. Reservation holders in Norway, and we know that Norway's hugely 
important for EVs as early adopters. Norway reservation holders are just starting now to complain about additional delays that some of them are facing. One customer, in fact, attempted to cancel his Audi e-tron order, for which he was presented with... A fine, says the industry service Electrive.com. This particular customer who reported the fine had initially been incensed about an additional six month waiting period on top of what he says he was told. Uh, the existing, well, that's on top of the existing delay. When he attempted to cancel his reservations, he was told that he had to pay 8% because the contract that he had signed, 8% of the value of the vehicle. So depending on which spec he went for, that could be anything between $5,920 and $6,800. So far, Audi, VW, Group, they haven't made comment. We will, of course, reserve any judgment on the validity of that story when Electrive have put a question in for comment from the press office at Audi. So when we get that, I will bring that to you thanks to Electrive. You'd hope that story isn't true. Yeah. You'd hope that story isn't true, and I'll leave it there. Talking of VW press releases, I got one today from VW, all about electric roads, zero carbon footprint, quieter vehicles, and good drivability with no emissions. That's what they are targeting with EVs, and potential heavy transport. On a busy highway, a truck with a trailer approaches a long section of pylons on the right-hand side. The vehicle, the truck's sensors, detect that the traffic lane is now equipped with an electric contact line. The driver pushes a button to raise a pantograph, which is fitted to the cab's roof. Within seconds, the cab turns completely silent. The combustion engine has stopped and the electrical motor powers the vehicle. This is how it works, says VW, their vision of electric roads. You find the e-highway. When you're on the e-highway, a sensor checks whether the traffic lane is equipped with the contact line. Until now, the truck has been powered by the combustion engine. The driver raises the pantograph. It connects to the contact line. When it's connected, the pantograph transfers energy directly to the electric motor, simultaneously charging a battery. During braking, electricity is generated as the flow of energy is reversed, charging the onboard battery. The pantograph disconnects when overtaking. When the truck is overtaking or the end of the electrified section, the pantograph then lowers itself. The electrical motor continues to run on battery power for as long as possible. After overtaking, the driver can return to the e-highway, says this press release from VW. They're very good at, at issuing uh, press releases. Are they, uh, not, not so good at actually releasing any electric cars in any big numbers. Let's move on. Th this, is, uh, oh, this is the stuff of sci-fi. Right, this is the stuff of wow. What if we had electric roads? The thing is, it's just not needed. Battery sizes are getting bigger. Battery density is getting better. Battery efficiency is getting better. Motor efficiency, drivetrain efficiency is getting better. The cost of batteries is coming down so quickly. The idea of having electrical wires along long stretches of highway, to my mind, seems alien. But this is their vision. Right, a couple more stories then. Shell is starting to build high-power chargers. We call them HPCs, high-powered chargers, at gas stations in Germany. This year, the oil company is going to build 50 of them across the country in Germany. 100 of them with a 100 charging stations with a capacity of at least 150 kilowatts. Further charging stations are going to follow, says Electrive today. And what Electrive have done is they've found a German piece of news and put it into English for me. Uh, Shell has bought a, uh, a utility company in Germany on board to do this. They're going to install the HPCs with, get this, CCS plugs, Chadamo plugs, and AC plugs as well, each providing up to 150 kilowatts for up to two vehicles at a time. This is great news. So one charging station, two people plug into it, wonderful. Unless you want to charge at the faster 300 kilowatts, then only one car can charge at a time, but... There aren't many cars that can charge at 150, let alone 300. According to media reports, locations are in Cologne and Munich planned. And finally, Daimler, Daimler will cut development costs of new Mercedes-Benz cars by a significant amount by 2025 and intensify alliances with rivals as a way to improve their margins. Ola Kalenius is the new chief executive, uh, said today 
and that's reported by Autoblog. The cost structure of electric cars is above that of the combustion engine car, he says. We are working hard on lowering this, Kalenius said, taking over from Dieter Zetcher at the company's annual general meeting on May 22nd, where Dieter Zetcher has done a fantastic job steering Daimler into the electric era, but he is retiring and stepping down. Maybe you saw him on the Formula One podium over the weekend. Daimler is relying on increased economies of scale for electric car batteries to drive down costs, working to cut the cost of expensive raw materials from electric car batteries. Uh, the car maker wants to reduce the use of cobalt in their batteries as well. Uh, don't they all? One of those companies that's doing very well is Panasonic and Tesla. And so it's interesting to see bringing this podcast right back full circle uh, where we go on that because although Tesla have got many options for their battery supply, oh, not many, they have options for their battery supply. You need to make sure that not just securing the batteries, but the right kind of chemistry and efficiency and cost and all those kind of things, as every car maker is just starting to discover. Let's answer our question of the week. Well, I'm not. You are. It's your bit of the show. Question of the week this week, thanks to myv.com. And no sitting on the fence. You can't say both. You, you're not allowed to. You've got to pick one or the other. What's more important in an EV? Getting the hardware right first or the software right first? Email me. Hello at evnewsdaily.com. And you can leave a comment on Facebook and YouTube. Well, time for the endy bit now. There are 212 patrons of the show that keep me going. You can check out patreon.com slash evnewsdaily if you feel so compelled to see what this Patreon malarkey is all about. How some people choose to support creators. And if you don't want to, that's absolutely fine. We'll carry on making the show every single day. If you want to listen every single day, you can hit subscribe and then you get all the brand new ones every single day there are 469 previous shows in the archive but plenty more to come trust me and you can get those shows first and free and automatically hit subscribe on youtube or your podcast app come and say hi on the socials by searching ev news daily have a wonderful day i'll catch you tomorrow and remember there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid